Hi, this is Professor Bolduck, and welcome to the lecture on the Krebs cycle. Now, sometimes when you look in your textbooks about the Krebs cycle, they'll refer to the TCA cycle or the citric acid cycle. But basically, they're all the same. But before I go much into the Krebs cycle, let's first sort of put things in perspective. So the Krebs cycle is actually a part of, of uh, different sub-metabolic pathways that form the cellular respiration. So to begin with, you have to start out with the molecule of glucose that goes through glycolysis. And glycolysis will generate two molecules of pyruvate, or pyruvic acid. But pyruvate itself cannot then lead into the Krebs cycle, which is the, ne the next subset of the uh, metabolic pathway. It needs to be converted into two molecules of acetyl-CoA. So we start out with one glycolysis, or I'm sorry, one glucose molecule. That one glucose molecule gets oxidized. It is catabolized into two molecules of pyruvic acid or pyruvate. Those two pyruvates then get converted. They are, they are also further oxidized into two molecules of acetyl-CoA. These acetyl-CoA, as I'm going to show you in the next slide, as shown right here, only has two carbon atoms, whereas pyruvate right here had three, so we lost two molecules of, I'm sorry, we lost a carbon atom, and we oxi also were oxidized, so NAD plus was reduced to NADH. Okay, so now we're going to enter the Krebs cycle. We're going to go from acetyl-CoA and enter this Krebs cycle. So the box that you see up top here, shaded in blue, is from basically from the previous slide, showing you the pyruvate converted to acetyl-CoA. Now acetyl-CoA will go into the Krebs cycle, same as the citric acid cycle here. And it's going to go through a series of enzymatic reactions. The whole point is that it's going to further oxidize the two carbons in acetyl-CoA, you're going to lose one carbon atom here and the other carbon atom here. This is going to complete the oxidation of these, of these atoms that originated in glucose. Now because we had two molecules of acetyl-CoA -CO coming into the cycle for every one molecule of glucose, you're going to go through this cycle, and it's going to go clockwise, you're going to go through that two times. What we're going to generate is this GTP, it can actually go into ATP. It will be converted. So for each cycle, then since there's two, you're going to generate two molecules of ATP, more energy. You're going to, uh, let's see, generate some NADH. Here's one NADH. Here's another NADH. And here's another NADH, and that's for one cycle. So again, because there's two cycles, these three times two becomes six molecules of NADH. And this slide doesn't really show it. It says OH2 or QH2. This should be actually FADH. FADH gets converted or reduced down to FAD, actually FADH2. It's FAD, I should erase this H here, becomes reduced to FADH2. So what's the whole point here? The whole point is that now we're giving off carbon dioxide. We have one, two, three carbon dioxides for every cycle. There's two cycles. So now all the carbon that came in in glucose are given off as carbon dioxide. These cells breathe out or exhale carbon dioxide. We further oxidize glucose. So by oxidizing, we gave up electrons. By giving off these electrons, we've released some of the energy. But really, all that we've made is two molecules of ATP. Remember, we've made two molecules of ATP net gain with, uh, with glycolysis. We still have a whole lot more to go. We still have about 36 molecules of ATP to be made. So that should tell you that there's still a lot of energy that needs to be released. So 
just keep in mind that the FADH2 and the NADH are going to be very, very important um, following this step, which is the electron transport chain. These molecules contain most of the energy. So, having that said, let's see what the what happened in the Krebs cycle. Okay, this is base. This is basically my summary slide. What happens in the Krebs cycle is we basically start out with two acetyl CoA's, and they get converted into four molecules of carbon dioxide, CO2. So we separated those carbons and we released and we, we got some ATP made. So we started with ADP and plus we have to add an or inorganic phosphate. So this gave us two molecules of ATP. So this these ATP are going to go off and they serve as the currency or the, the um, energy for the cells to continue their work. But more importantly is that we've created six molecules, or we start out with six molecules of NAD+. And we've reduced them. So NAD+, is the oxi oxidized form. We've reduced them to NADH. Let's get the D here and the H. So we, we reduce them to NADH. These are going to go off and they have tons of energy still. So these guys are very important. We also made or start out with two molecules of FAD. And just like the NAD+, we reduced them. And so we got two molecules of FADH2. D H two. And that's basically it. That's what happened in the Krebs cycle. But this is very important because also, just like the NADH, the FADH2 are going to carry these electrons. They're electron carriers, they're coenzymes. They're going to take these and en this energy or these electrons and they're going to bring it to the next pathway, I'm going to abbreviate it as ETC, that's the electron transport chain. So that's going to be very important. That's where we're going to um, gain more energy in the form of ATP. So to somewhat help, um, help summarize the slide, what we just talked about was the Krebs cycle, also known as the citric acid cycle. We started out with two molecules of acetyl-CoA. We gave off some, some ATP. But more importantly, the FA, we've created FADH2 and NADH. And these have moved on, as I just said, to the electron transport chain. But if you've lis listened to my lecture on glycolysis, you also know that we've had some molecules of NADH made in, during glycolysis. Also, during the intermediate step, we made two more molecules of NADH. These guys are going to come into play and look, look at their net results. They're going to make all that molecules of ATP. So that's going to be discussed in the lecture of the electron transport chain.